Welcome to the 2022 Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series, our 35th anniversary, presented by Bass Pro Shops and Mako Boats. You're about to learn from some of the top saltwater anglers in the country. Now, the key to getting the most in the seminar series is to listen to the little subtleties, the adjustments that we are doing when the fishing is tough. This is what we like to refer to as the golden nuggets of the seminar series. We're about ready to get underway, so let's get right down to it. Coming to you from the IGFA in South Florida, it's the 35th Annual Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series, brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Mako Boats. Now, here's George Poveromo. Welcome to the Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series, edition 2022, filmed on location at the International Game Fish Association. The topic is striped bass, and I'm gonna put a little bit of a twist into this one here, and that one of our panel members, has yet to catch a striped bass. I mean, if he did, he didn't tell me about it. But Mike Goodwine, who is an ardent snook angler and redfish angler from Tampa Bay, Florida, I put him on here for a reason. It's because our snook share very similar habits to the striped bass. So we're gonna sort of have him as point counterpoint and uh, compare snook and striped bass a little bit. But when it comes to the pros of catching striped bass, you have Melissa Toro out of South Jersey, who is uh, equally skilled at catching them artificials as well as baits. Then one of our offshore top guns out of the South Jersey area, that is Captain Joe Trainer, who specializes in trolling for trophy or the larger striped bass. So let's get down to this and I'll fire the first shot over the bow here, just to create a little bit of a light controversy in this one here. I've always said, that in my career, as many times as I've been to Mid-Atlantic and Northeast fishing for striped bass, I love it. And they remind me so much in terms of habits as our snook. So Melissa, let's start off with you. Probably maybe one of the easier ways to go out and for somebody to get bass if they want to be sporty is getting them on artificial lures, whether it's jigs, whether it's top waters. What, what would you say your go-to method is for catching striped bass in general? 100% are plastic shads, something similar to this. This has been very successful. And the bigger shad you go, the bigger bass hopefully you'll catch. So oh, Okay, so let's set up the scenario. Okay. Again, you're out of South Jersey, yep. but a lot of those conditions could relate to wherever you're at in, in, in the Northeast. So for your striped bass, when do you see those fish mainly inshore versus start to get them a little bit more to off the beaches and offshore? And what do you fish for primarily? Where are you looking for, Matt, mostly? So, so inshore, let's say the back bays sure. and in the jetties, I'm catching them in the back bays all throughout the summer from late spring all throughout the summer, mainly at night. Look under bridge, like in your inlets, the bridge pilings at night. I'll actually, I, I love my artificials, but I'll drift um, live eels or live spot around bridge pilings, and I'll catch them up to 40 inches during the summer. In <laughs> the back bays? Yes, in the back bays, and then also- And are they around shadow lines or by yeah, piling? Yeah, exactly, so like the like, pilings like our, of the shadow lines. Just like lines. our snook, so I'm- if you yeah, say, right. if Mike says so, yeah, definitely. Mike, you say so? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> I say so. Yeah. And you then know, if you... Uh, it, oh, the one go. thing about striped bass that a lot of people don't know, Florida has some big ones. They do? Yeah. The uh, state record is 42 pounds. Did you know that? I did not know. Oh, I, I, just, know. I just Googled it before I came out here. So. <laughs> <laughs> Must be true. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> so I won't Google it. I mean, if you saw it on the Facebook, you know it's 100% true at that point. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, we got them North Florida and, and they, they stock them in some of the freshwater lakes too. Yeah, we got a, a lake in um, Turkey Creek. It's a reservoir and they actually have them, have them in there. And uh, told a little fill, but I've caught a few. Oh, you did? But I won't consider it like they were small, and we caught them on chicken livers. Chicken livers? How'd you do that? Fishing for catfish and caught striped bass. Really? Yeah. I have so. to try that one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, moving right along, let's go back with you on this one, Melissa. Uh, okay, you talk about the backcountry, and okay, and, and what is the average depth, would you say, in the back bays that you're finding these fish at? 
the um, shallow. On average, time. not too shallow. Uh -huh. I go around also dock pilings, okay. which have lights. Yep. If you have a boat, a kayak, I'll, I'll fish around that, or just if, if you have access to a dock to fish off of that. And I'm finding them in anywhere from like 17 feet to around like the bridge pilings, I would say it's around like 35, 40 feet of water. So on my Sim, Simrad fish finder, they come up as kind of, I call it boomerangs. It might not be, okay. they're little marks, and I call them boomerangs. And sometimes they're not true boomerangs, but you see these marks and you'll see them piled up sometimes. Also, then around the fall, I'll start hitting the sod banks. Okay. And I'll either anchor there and I'll, you know, throw out a piece of uh, bunker chunk mm -hmm. or maybe even some clam. And I'm not too far, I'm a little bit off the sod banks, not too close. I come up very slow. I don't want to scare the we'll striped bass. Sure. We're going to come right back to it. We're going to jump out to a commercial break. All right. And uh, we'll be right back with the Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series and striped bass. Hang in there. The Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series is brought to you by Simrad. Go with Simrad and go with confidence. Penn, let the battle begin. Sirius XM Marine, weather, fish mapping, and entertainment for anglers. Mercury Outboards, go boldly. Angle, portable fridge freezers and high performance coolers. George will be right back. Welcome back to the 35th Annual Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series from the IGFA in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Mako Boats. Let's get right back to George. Welcome back to the Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series, Stripe Bass. I'm talking with Melissa Toro on catching stripers in the back bays, pretty much primarily her home area of southern New Jersey. So we're coming back, you were marking these on the machine. So now are you taking those shads and dropping down on them? Or are you working off towards the bank and bringing them back? Tell me through the subtleties of working those. So yes, with the shads or even some top water lures. Okay. Okay, so the shads, yeah, I'm just casting them towards the sod banks and then just kind of working them like in the middle of um, the water column. A nice steady slow retrieve, not too fast, not too slow. Well, maybe a little bit slow, but not too, too slow. And don't give up reeling them when it gets closer to the boat. Sometimes they'll chase it right up to the boat. So that's what I do with the sod banks. Also in the back bays, I look for um, rough bottoms. And you don't really need a Simrad for that. If you see turbulent water, kind of, it looks just turbulent, like if it's boiling or rolling. And that will indicate like rough bottoms. Also where mouths of creeks kind of, multiple mouths of creeks kind of meet, that's also indicative of um, rough bottom. So I'll fish that area too. And I'll use the, the plastic shads. I'll also use plastic eel imitations with like a jig head, maybe like a gotcha. quarter ounce <laughs> jig head. And then once again, um, if you could get live spot, that has proven to be really, really good. And live eel is good too. But peanut bunker, mullet, uh, bunker chunks, those are all great in the back bay. Mike, you're listening to that, the tactics and the retrieves and, and, and the soft plastics and, and the live baits. Are the retrieves pretty much equating to, say, related to inshore snook fishing, what you do? Yeah, so much. Um, she's saying the bunker chunks, that's cutting the bunker. And yes. So we fish for, for big snook with cut bait. And same thing what she's talking about. We get the Manhattan scale sardines, even mullet, big chunks and chunk it out. And um, speaking on, you say they hang around the boat docks. And those pilings are spots where they can ambush. They like to ambush too. So that's the main reason why they. So that's kind of listening to her talk about the stripers sound just like snook. So it's kind of the same. Sounds the same to me. Exactly. So one got seven stripes, one got one, so. <laughs> those bo boat docks and those bridge pilings attract a lot of bait fish. They form like natural eddies. And that's why it's just key where, you know, striped bass, I, I think they're like a little lazy. They just like, especially the bigger ones, they just like to hang out and just let the bait just kind of come into their mouth yeah, and, and ambush the big, them. the big snook are scavengers too. Yeah. <laughs> well, there you go. That's a, some sort of unorthodox tactics there, but I'll, yeah. but I'll buy them. Hey, Joe, <laughs> let's talk about trolling for bass. You know, we look at offshore trolling and we think that sometimes that's very arduous. But when you look at some of the Northeast trolling tactics with all these rods and these big, what look like downrigger balls that they use in this and that, you know, it looks, you know, and I've done that and it's deadly effective and you catch fish on it. But how would you simplify that? Someone who wants to go on the troll, 
maybe not get all that crazy. And uh, what would you suggest would be a decent trolling setup that could still put somebody in the money when it comes to maybe even trophy striped bass? Yeah, well, we don't go too crazy. We're a big boat and we, we have a little bit more trouble. You know, we're a faster boat. We can typically slow down to like 4.2, where some of these center consoles can go in the three range, which is more optimal. Mm -hmm. So we use basically a four rod spread with the mojos, with the bigger shads, or, you know, at whichever plug you prefer. And this year, that was unbelievably so, deadly. So so if you have a four line spread, you got the mojos, uh, where do you place the mojos? Do you stagger them and then you go for the swimming plugs from there or is only one swimming plug, three of the mojos? How, yeah, what's basically the combo? we'll put like two double mojos, one with like a, you know, a three foot leader and then one with a lighter one and they'll be like right off the back. And it's all about knowing what you're getting bit on, you know, and the, the guys downstairs. And I'm gonna grill you on, trying to dial into an area where trolling would be productive here in a second. We're gonna jump out to a commercial break. We'll be right back on Stripe Bass from the Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series. Hang in there. The Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series is brought to you by Rapala, your best shot at a world record. Suffix, always use the best line. VMC, your expert in hooks. Williamson Lures for the Pelagic Playground. Starbright, blending technology with performance since 1973. George will be right back. Welcome back to the 35th Annual Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series from the IGFA in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Mako Boats. Let's get right back to George. We're back to the Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series. Stripe bass is the topic. I'm talking to Captain Joe Trainer about simplified trolling for trophy striped bass. You talked about you're working a big boat four line spread, basically sometimes two to maybe three of the, the mojos and working a uh, swimming plug in there, be it a CD18 or a, a Mag 40 or 30. So what's gonna dial you into an area where you would think there's trophy bass? Is the matter working around bunker schools or is it more of, 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 a, of a current or bottom structure area? So number one, I'd say the most important thing is your cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, you know, we're fishing within two, three miles of the beach and somebody could be 10 miles to the north of you and they have 30 and you be just a couple miles. Um, knowing your sounder, knowing what bait looks like, knowing what fish and bait looks like. And number three being um, how, how to use your radar for birds. Mm -hmm. So I'd say all three are equally important. Um, some days this year you'd saw the birds and you could catch them on top water. And other days there was no birds and we were still catching 30 a day. Hmm. So it was- On the troll or top waters? We did, we did both. So you couldn't really catch them on top water when we couldn't see the birds. And then you'd go out there the next day and then it would all be all top water. Because hmm. we prefer to catch it on top water, you know, sport fishing and everything else. So if you don't have to troll, we don't have to, but Every day you had to be ready for both on, on a daily basis. I'm going to throw this one either to Joe or Melissa and then Mike, you know, uh, you're never short on words. You want to jump in and answer this All or right. give an opinion. <laughs> we'll, we'll take it. Looking at trolling for striped bass and again, using that, that snook parallel. We pull like all over inlet, my hometown inlet, North Miami, around 15, 16 foot average depth in there for the snook we'll end up pulling a CD18 ramp up or one of the uh, mag 30s. And single-handedly, you just come down, you put the rod tip to the water, you get that plug just above the bottom and make passes into the inlet, you know, around the bridge spans, get up, take the lure up, turn the boat around the other way, shoot it back out and work the opposite direction. We pull off big snook that way on the troll. How about trolling either maybe alongside the deeper bridges or maybe inlets with trolling plugs uh, yes, no, maybe for striped bass? Me personally, trolling through the, the channels in the back bay or through the inlet, we haven't really done that. Um, but not, wouldn't those bass be traversing those at times? They, they should, but we're throwing like top water lures okay. at them. That's all we're doing, or we're doing the you artificial shad. You just want to be shad. more sporty. Huh? Yes, exactly. <laughs> you guys come we, out and say it. We have so much current too. Exactly, that, that's to another thing safely. too. But when I'm going outside the inlet, you know, a few miles outside the inlet, then I'm using the methods that Joe just described. Let's circle back now with, with the top water. Okay. And you're seeing these fish. Is there any rhyme or reason to the size of the plug that you use for top water or maybe the color? Does that not make a difference? 
I think it probably all makes a difference. Yeah. I was out with a seasoned crew that knows a little bit more. This, this year, I've really gotten into top water lures. I have a lot more to learn. But I know twitching them back to the boat created excitement for them, and they would literally chase it back to the boat. What pound leader would you use in, in that situation? I think they were just using maybe like a 40-pound leader. Okay. Yeah. So that's what I would do. And, and now I know Mike has already uh, opposed to that because he is definitely not an artificial lure guy. And I could see in his <laughs> mind he's getting ready for a rebuttal. So I'm going I'm to let you have it. Bad uh, it, Mike. I have thrown top water lures at Whoa. some snook before. Yeah. And I don't, she say colors. Color might matter up there, but down here, that lure going across the top, I don't think they look up at it and say, oh, that's a red plug. <laughs> I ain't gonna eat it. They going after the action. They think it's a hurt. Uh, scale of sardine going across the water and they hit it. So, yep. I mean, in a, if you ever had a real good top water plug, there's no paint on it because it's, it's real good. The fists have knocked the paint off of it. So, yep. I don't think the, the color really matter myself. Gotcha. For snook, it might matter for Scriber, I don't know. But gotcha. We're going to take a commercial break and we'll come right back to our striped bass session. You're watching the Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series from the International Game Fish Association. We'll be right back. The Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series is brought to you by Columbia Sportswear, stay cool and protected while fishing, JL Audio, ahead of the curve, ACR, building survival products since 1956, Florida Keys and Key West, visit flakeys.com. George will be right back. Welcome back to the 35th Annual Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series from the IGFA in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Mako Boats. Let's get right back to George. Welcome back, Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series. With a very distinguished panel, we're dealing with striped bass, even though we have one snook angler on the panel, Mike Goodwine. <laughs> I want to go to the chunking or live baiting routine. And didn't Jersey now uh, prohibit any kind of using trebles or live bait, you're in circle hook now, that's a law. Yes. And I remember hearing so many people complain about that. And as someone who's come out of South Florida with circle hooks and all, most of our fisheries, I was often wondering what took everybody so long up there. If you just learn how to let the circle hook set, it's one of the best ways to catch fish. And once a circle hook is set, rarely is it ever gonna pull out. So I'll throw this real quickly to you, whether you're chunking or live bait, and I often wonder too, and you ought to know better than this one, Joe, is everyone takes the hook and they just put it in the bait or the chunk and send it down. Why don't you bridle it? Why don't you bridle the live bait if you're gonna pitch one out or bridle it to the chunk like we do with sailfish, it prevents that hook point from turning back in, your hookup percentages go better. I'm just throwing, throwing out well, them, trouble. Them What's your spots take? spots got like a hook, like, like this perfect spot right behind her head it's like sits in there perfectly i mean it's really but you take a rigging needle and you go through the, the, the nostrils or whatever and you put that George, thing out we're front. from new jersey we don't change <laughs> we do everything the same way every day it's true <laughs> i mean no would it work yes yeah but, you would think the hookup percent would be so much better you know we did all trial lazy. all these different species <laughs> mike anything you'd like to add on that um you're the live bait pro i mean Back to what you said about trolling, you trolling for, for snook. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've never seen nobody do it on our side either, you know. Which, is, which now, is crazy. How it, much the gas prices is now, I'm going to one spot and pulling down, and that's it. <laughs> I ain't trolling at all. <laughs> well, you, Not until those gas prices go down. <laughs> <laughs> Use electric troll motor if you have to. Oh, that's yeah. the beauty about, you know, you look at the bays that we have in the intercoastal, the long bridges that over so much shallow water, you get a CD 15, it won't run as deep, but you'll get down near the, the shallower bottom. You work at night, you troll the shadow lines, you crush the snook, the inlets, you go with the, how deep the inlet is, you pull the deeper ones, and you're covering so much territory with that bait down there, they're suckers for it. I am surprised that never really caught on in your side, and you know, I'll just leave it at that. Yeah. <laughs> we could try it over there and they could try it up north. Yeah, they and could. we will get back with you and let you know. Yeah, they, then let, let me know in the bridle and too when you guys decide to go ahead and, uh, and step it up a little bit up there in Jersey. All right, Melissa, well, so we got about 30 seconds left. I'm going to give you the final say so to maybe wrap out this striped bass session. If you had to leave on three super quick pointers to make somebody a more proficient striped bass angler, what would they be? Go out at night. Night is always best. Look for lights 
around bridge pilings, around dock, you know, uh, docks and, and boat slips and everything. Be respectful of the owner's docks. <laughs> I always say that. Um, and then, you know, I love my artificials, but I've caught my best bass with live bait. So try live eels. Yep. And then spot. I know Joe said they're expensive. If you have access to um, a dock, I catch them off my dock. I catch them off my dock. On, I, I actually put my nephews out there and my niece, and they have a blast catching them and get a spot cage, and you keep them in there. So try to get spot like at the end of summer and put them in the spot cage. Or, the or, or to charter, just charter Joe. Yeah, that's, that's, the fourth, that's the fourth one. <laughs> All right, well, that's a perfect ending. We're going to put the, uh, the A cap together on that one. I appreciate the panel. A lot of fun sitting here with our one sole snook anchor. You're watching the Saltwater Sports and National Seminar Series. That was Stripe Bass. We're coming back with a totally different topic. Well, there you have it. This week's Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series presented by Bass Pro Shops and Mako Boats. Now, adhering to seminar series tradition, you still have an opportunity for a chance to maybe win one of the many door prizes we have available. Go to nationalseminarseries.com, log on to the door prize banner, and enter your name and contact information. At the conclusion of the seminar series, we will computer generate the winners of those prizes. So get right down to it.